Let's choose a new main. But how? What is the best way to choose a main or even an alt? Meta? Fun? What the raid leader needs? Something that's easy to get into groups with? Exactly! By the end of the video, you will understand how to choose the best main for you and how to never have this issue again. Choosing the right main and alt has to be done in a smart way, just like learning backend web development with this video sponsor, Boot.dev. And you are not just learning backend web development, but actually doing it in the most interesting way I have ever seen a course do it through an RPG-like game. As you go through the course, you have achievements, quests and rewards that really create a really cool learning experience. That's because the people at Boot.dev believe that not getting bored is the smartest way to learn code. And learn code you will! By using Boot.dev, you will learn back-end web development from start to finish with the Python and Go programming languages. The whole platform is made in a way to get you writing a lot of code since getting your hands on that keyboard and finishing projects is the best way to do it. All of the content down at boot.dev is free to read and watch in guest mode since not everyone has the possibility to pay for a membership, but if you do decide to take the logical next step, getting a membership will unlock interactivity and the actual game that goes with it. I was hooked in the first few minutes of doing the basic steps the course takes you through and by clicking the link in the description and using our code Marcellian, you'll get 25% off of your first membership payment, whether you choose for the monthly plan or the yearly one. Thanks Buddhadev for sponsoring this video. Let's start with why I, and by extension you, would ever decide to stop playing a spec and choose something else. The reasons I went through that push me away from my main, which was Balanced Druid, are very likely stuff that you probably felt and encountered throughout your WoW experience. Going into 10.2 with Balanced Druid was bittersweet for me. First of all, I talked before about the design of the spec. It still is fun today and I am enjoying playing it. But there are a few buts. First of all, the probably most important one is that I suck at doing damage with it. Since I am a mythic creator, performance matters to an extensive degree. Now I don't consider myself a bad balanced druid, but am not close to being the top of my game, at least in raids. When I went into dungeons, I did alright, all things considered. But raiding has been a back and forth. That probably has a bit to do with the fact that balance isn't particularly great in a Mirdrasil. Of course, there are a lot of balanced druids that would smoke my ass and out DPS the majority of my guild on all fights by judging the logs. But then again, are logs even a good metric to judge performance with the influx of external power from augmentation and people padding, which has been a thing for years? Who knows? That's not important. What's important is that the standard I hold myself to, the performance I want to dish out, was way less than what I hoped for. That's very subjective, but I am sure a lot of you have felt something similar at some point. This of course, if performance has been something you strive for. For some it's easier, for some harder, but at the end of the day, I want to feel like I'm contributing to my guild's progress, not holding it back cause stuff just dies a bit slower with me in the group. This was the first reason to change. But if it was just this, I would have sucked it up and kept improving. Funny enough, fun was not an issue. I loved and still love the spec. The second issue is related though and that is my enjoyment of the game with my buds. Outside raiding, I do keys with Marcellian and the gang. M plus is fun and it's no surprise it's balance's forte. Unfortunately for me, our group needed a tank and I was the only one up to the task to tank 20s early in our mythic progression. So I ended up being the default tank of our group. I normally don't mind it, but having to be able to tank 20s and still mythic raid on two different specs slowed down my gearing on my balance and the practice needed to get better at the spec. It adds up. And since we are on the chapter of Mythic Plus, one thing that bugged me was the actual design of Balance. Normally, I love dot specs, still do. However, Balance is one of those specs that requires ramp, meaning that when things die too quick, I don't get to do a lot of damage, which practically isn't an issue, things dying quick is the whole point of having a good group, but it did make me feel like I was again not contributing what I could be, 
Once again, this is not to knock off balance or the combat system. It's again a personal thing. Mostly an ego thing now that I think about it as I am writing this script. All of these were just minor grievances that at the end of the day I accepted and still didn't really make me want to stop maining balance. Until one day. One fateful day I started playing Rogue. After the rework, Rogue changed so much that it became what I would consider a perfect class or as close to perfection as a class can be or has been in WoW for my experience. In terms of overall performance in Raid, we are no strangers to Rogue being vastly superior to Balance. In fact, at the time of me playing it, all Rogue specs were excelling in at least one area of the game. My skill on the class aside and the performance of Rogue aside, the design of the class is what made me question Balance. Balance Druid was incredibly squishy for endgame content, and not being as tanky as other classes is fine, but the level of squishiness was and still is ridiculous. And this dead horse has been beaten enough as it is for me to not need to talk about this again. But the fact that the survivability contrast between Rogue and Druid was so high made me really question what was going on. And to be fair, it wasn't just Rogue, but Red Paladin as well. Most likely, Havoc meets these criteria, but Demon Hunter hasn't been on my radar since Legion, so we'll not add it to the discussion. But all of these rework classes seem to perfect and eliminate most, if not all, of the weaknesses they had and made them feel like they are designed to be played in Dragonflight and for people to have fun playing them in Dragonflight, while Balance felt old and left behind, likely as many other specs and classes probably still feel today. No crazy, easily punished ramp required, no squishiness that forces me to go bare form and hurt my performance even more, no interrupt issues in a meta where kicks are so important, etc. Obviously, since balance is one of the S tier specs in keys and okay in raids, people are definitely making it work, whether that comes down to their skill, their group composition or both. For an average mythic raider like myself, it felt I had to deal with more friction than it was worth when these other classes couldn't find their fucks to be given about all of the issues I just mentioned. After talking it with my radiator and getting a surprising green light, I decided to swap. And now we get to the best way I always found on how to choose a spec to main, or even alt if that's your fancy. Now, the fun component is very subjective and always will, since it can offset a lot of the things for you. But by showing you how I decided on what to play will help you make a choice for yourself as well. Now to start things off, I had a few candidates for a main. I already talked about Rogue and yes, all three specs were going to be on the table. But during that time I also played Shaman, Death Knight and Paladin. The reasons for Shaman being an option is that Enhancement was performing really well, has always been a spec I enjoyed and even mained in the past and a key reason it could off-spec to Resto, and I can be flexible when doing keys with my friends. Elemental was also stupid fun, which wasn't bad since if you are watching this video, chances are you are an altaholic that gets bored of a spec, so a class that can off-spec is the perfect one for players like us. Death Knight was on the list because it shared gear easily with Blood, and I was more inclined to play Blood in keys with the guys than I was to play Bear. So it ticked a bunch of the boxes that Druid had issues with. Paladin was a special one. Red was a beast, and now after the buffs you can see it too I suppose. Plus, Prot Paladin was an easy off-spec choice for me. Not to mention that I, as with most people, love the idea of getting a cool-ass legendary that keeps getting buffed. So with these being the contenders, how can you, and by you I mean me, decide what to main? Don't worry, there's a spreadsheet. <laughs> but more importantly, you have to have a goal to be able to choose. Having fun is nice, but that's not a goal. It's too abstract and you can have fun regardless of the way you play. And if you are deciding what to play and haven't chosen yet, chances are the spec being fun isn't enough for you. Fun can also be you enjoying your performance, your rewards, your contributions to your group of your friends or your guild's raid progression. My goal is and was to get as close to cutting edge as possible, reach 3k IO and get at least one orange parse. Parses are weird because they need a lot of external help, but if I could get close, I can consider myself good on the spec. And with those goals in mind, we can get to work. 
When choosing a spec to main or play for an extended amount of time, you have to know what you want out of it. As an example, we will use my criteria, but feel free to adapt these for yourself. I consider a spec to main a spec that can fill these eight categories. That's right, we are going into the nerd zone. First, the spec variety. Some people are fine with doing the same thing all the time, and that's great. I am not, and chances are you aren't either. By spec variety, I am talking about having a different playstyle with different builds. Let's use Rogue as an example, with all three of its specs. Outlaw, for instance, doesn't have any spec variety. Mostly since, at the time, the keep it rolling build wasn't a thing, so you just played the ambush crackshot playstyle in both raids and dungeons. On all bosses. And all dungeons. Assassination and Sub, however, had, and still have, different builds. Assassination seems to have the most variety at the moment, where it's the only rogue spec that can play all of the capstones in different situations. Not only that, swapping from build to build, your damage profile changes and your gameplay changes a bit. With a regular raid shadow dance build, you nuke a target hard, changing internal bleeding to caustic spatter, you have cleave damage while maintaining priority damage on the boss. This is also popular in keys, where people play a heavy priority spec and just leave the AoE damage to the spatter and their party. You can also go full AoE with Crimson Tempest, Arterial Shock and Sudden Demise and use Vanish to constantly put bleeds out on a lot of targets all the time. To a lesser degree, Sub, Red and Unholy have spec variety where they change cooldowns and buttons between raiding and keys. So if we're going to look at all of these specs and give them a score, I will give 1 point to the specs I consider to have enough variety and 0 to the rest. With an almost even split, multi-role is something I care about since I want to be flexible with the people I play with. Helps when doing keys and raids on stream when we are missing a tank or a healer. Obviously, Rogue gets a 0 across the board since it can only DPS, while the other classes can either heal, tank or all of the above. The spec design is something I talked about in previous videos as well. Outside of Frost Decay, which is the exact same spec, just with more fancy passives that don't really change much, everyone has a point. The defensives, damage profile, cooldown management, playstyle, all of these factors into a spec's design. Since feeling rewarded for my effort was an issue with balance, it became very important here. Similarly to the spec design, all but Frost Decay get a point. They are all rewarding enough where, after getting the rotation right, the payoff quickly follows. The fantasy of the spec also matters, and I think it matters more than some people are willing to admit. It matters enough where Evoker has received a lot of scrutiny for a lot of things, but the prevailing theme seems to be that it just doesn't doesn't feel Warcrafty enough. Whether it is because it doesn't actually look like a dragon, the lore felt forced when it was introduced or any other number of things, it sure made it less popular than any new class should be. If it wasn't for augmentation doing all the heavy lifting, the class would likely be dead. And people don't play Og because of fantasy. <laughs> Clearly it's just for the meta. As far as I am concerned, all of the specs are fulfilling my fantasy requirements for what a Warcraft class should be. One point to all. This is new. The patch content is essentially what 10.2 adds to my spec to make it feel special. This is the legendary axe for DK and Paladin. This was the overall lore and theme for Druid when I decided to main it and so on. Rogue and Shaman don't really seem to have a lot of flavor related to their class here, so they get a nil. But one point to the rest. I initially called this section breaking the mold, but really it's all about something new, something different, something I haven't made before, something that can pose a challenge. Here only Rogue gets a point, since I made all of the other classes in the past, don't find them challenging, looking at you Frost DK and Red, or have played them quite a bit prior, also looking at you Red Paladin. Last but not least, the fun aspect is the most universal and it is very subjective. Since it's all based on my opinion, I won't go into super details as to why I find some of these fun, we have tier list for that, <laughs> but we'll rank all of these specs by giving them points based on my interpretation with 5 being the most fun going down from there. Rogue takes the cake for me with enhancement in the same category. Red slightly lower since the simplicity of the spec will get repetitive faster than the others. 
DK kind of loses here a bit since the playstyles are almost the same for the third expansion in a row. And the final results are in and came in close between Rogue and Red. And if you have been on our streams these last few months, you know the winner for me was Rogue. The main reason I didn't go Red was actually because we just have a lot of Red Paladins and Rogue is a class I never mained before. Assassination in particular has been a spec I wanted to main in raids since BFA, but it always felt like it was lacking something. That something was fixed by the rework and boy oh boy does it deliver. This whole process is stupidly analytical, but hey, if you keep having issues to choose between different specs, taking a more cold, objective approach can work. But maybe you are fine with Druid, in which case, here is a video for you that goes over Feral vs Balance and why one spec is better than the other. Click it and find out who actually wins between the two.